Hey, what's up everybody? This is the Helpful Hacker, and today we're going to be going the going over the intro to Digital Forensics Room from Try Hack Me. So, we'll jump right in and get started. So, the intro to Digital Forensics Room, it is part of the introduction to cybersecurity pathway. It's also the first video in the introduction to defensive security. We can see it here on our little path outline intro to digital forensics so this is where we at where we're at if you haven't checked out the introduction to offensive security those videos are available on my channel you should check those out and yeah so we'll jump into this digital forensics is awesome so we'll get started with task number one basically just going to give us a brief overview of what digital forensics is so it's pretty much, I mean, forensics is just using science to solve crimes or to investigate crimes. And so digital forensics is using that in respect to like computers, laptops, phones, other digital devices that can be used or involved in crime in some way, shape or form. How do we go about doing that? How do we go about, you know, getting them? figuring out what information we can glean from them for a forensic investigation. So yeah, just think of digital forensics is basically regular forensics, but with computers. And forensics is just using science to help solve crime pretty much. That's the way I like to look at it. So read through that. And then down here, they make a distinction between public versus private investigation. So public would be like the police department, the stuff you see in the movies. Private would be for like a private corporation, right? Maybe a corporation is suspicious that one of their employees is selling, you know, secrets or whatever for some sort of technology. Let's say they're building, I don't know, some cool AI and they're giving or selling off source code. You could, before you do a public investigation you may not want to do one because you may not want people knowing that or you may not want to press criminal charges i don't know whatever but you wouldn't think it but you do get a lot of private sector investigations and these are just investigations that a corporation usually carries out and it's most often carried out against one of their employees um but anyways so public and private big difference one is criminal one is just you know by a corporation so read through all that make sure you kind of got a grasp on it and then consider the desk in the photo above in addition to the smartphone camera and SD card what would be interesting for digital forensics that would be the laptop and if you look at that picture you can see the laptop right there so that's task one Next, task two, the digital forensics process. So when you're a digital forensic investigator, uh, whether that's public or private, they usually follow the same steps, right? And that's just to keep consistency you know, across the board. And for the most part, if you're doing a criminal forensic investigation, they have to be super careful and they're following best practices. So in the private sector, they try to copy that as much as possible. So for the most part, everything you would learn would apply to both private and actual public forensic investigation. So they lay out some stuff here. So first acquire the evidence or acquisition, that's where you actually get it. And you could do it just a whole, you could talk forever about each one of these steps, but we're not gonna do that. So that's step one, get the evidence. Step two, establish a chain of custody. You can read about how to do that. It's usually a paper form of some kind. And then step three, place the evidence in a secure container because you can remote wipe things or things can get damaged. So they have special pouches that they usually put digital evidence in. And then transport the evidence to your digital forensics lab um, at the lab retrieve the evidence and you create what's a f called a forensic copy so you image it um yeah we could talk a lot about that but we won't so that's step two then uh you put it back in a secure container because if anything were to happen to the image to like if anything happened to the copy that you made 
you could always make another one and you want to preserve that because there are situations where you may have to do that and then you can reference this guide to computer forensics and investigations that's kind of where they got all that information so digital forensics includes and then they give you some stuff validation um, you use validated tools it's got to be repeated you report on it report writing is a big one in the real world spend mucho tiempo doing that so a lot of time but anyways so yeah read through that make sure you understand it and then it is essential to keep track of who is handling it of who is handling it what that's a poorly written question at any point in time to ensure that evidence is admissible in the court of law what is the name so that was basically you gotta you know establish a chain of custody so based on how this written i assume it's just chain of custody right so that helps you know that evidence has not been tampered with so that's task two a little bit about the digital forensic process again this is just an intro room so that was a super quick brief intro now it's on to task three a practical example of digital forensics okay so i already started my machine so i'm gonna jump on to that it's right over here and we are going to open up a terminal yeah and then we'll read through some of this so um they talk a little bit about digital forensics we have these download task files if you're using uh the browser based machine that they provide they already have those files in there for you so you don't you don't have to worry about that so and that's where they put them root rooms intro to digital forensics so then they're going to talk a little bit down here about metadata and how you can glean information from it using a tool called pdf info and then they ask a question so we'll we'll do that so let's go in here. What directory are we in? LS. We're going to CD rooms. CD shift rooms. And then we're going to CD digital. Is there a digital forensics room? Huh. What did they say here? I could have sworn intro gosh that's why so let's do intro digital forensics and by the way to finish that because if you can hear I'm not typing that all the way out once you get enough of something you can hit tab and it'll just automatically finish it for you so LS and we have some stuff in here so we got a dot doc dot pdf dot zip dot jpeg let's see what they want us to do again whenever you create a document or just computers in general pretty much everything it's it's always keeping track of metadata which is data about data kind of that's one way to think of it and so when you create a text file it keeps track of when you made it when was the last time it was edited blah 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 all sorts of stuff so that's all falls under the category of metadata so it looks like they want us to use a tool PDF info so if I go to man PDF info here we go it gives me the full kind of list of uh, how to use this and, and what it's used for so is a document information extractor for PDFs the info dictionary contains the following values so you can pull all this stuff out so yeah and then they got they got our options down here and yeah so we'll get out of this so whenever you get a tool that you haven't used before it's important to check out like its usage and how it works so that's why I did that. The man pages are manual pages for PDF info. 
and they want us to PDF info, I assume, ransom. Letter dot PDF. Yeah. Okay, sweet. So we have a title, we have subject, author, and Gree Shepherd. Right? So that's useful info. They tell us when it was created. It was created. Wednesday, February 23rd, 2022 at 9.10. Sweet. So we were able to use that. Down here, this is just them explaining how to install it if you're not using the attack box with it pre-installed and if you're using your own Kali machine or something. That's, that's what that is. So using PDF info, find out the author of the attached PDF file. We did that. So we can just copy this. And there you go. So Anne Gree Shepherd, that's the answer. So got that one taken care of. Now we're gonna talk about EXIF data, which is exchangeable image file format data. And basically that's metadata on image files. So when you take a photo with your smartphone, it keeps track of a bunch of information and sometimes it'll even give you GPS coordinates of where you actually took the photo. So that's, that's one that's kind of creepy because phones are creepy, but also it's very useful for forensics because if someone places a photo, or takes a photo of some kind, we can oftentimes figure out, you know, where did that photo come from? So, there are many online and offline tools that read EXIF data. So basically, there, there's a bunch of different tools that will take this data out of a image for you and allow you to look at it. We're gonna use a tool called the EXIF tool. So let's do the same thing. We're gonna do man EXIF tool because we always got to take a look at our tool so we know what we're actually doing and kind of how to do it. So let's see. Read and write metadata information and files, reading, EXIF tool, then you do the options, tag, tag, and then file name. So that's for reading, which is what we're going to do. You can also write tag, tag, value, file. That would be how you'd write. You can copy and you can do other stuff. So we're just gonna do the basics. We're gonna read some EXIF data from this. So let's just do EXIF tool. And then what is the name of the image? Letter image.jpg. Oh, spelt that wrong. And then the up arrow lets you just throw down your last command. I added an extra F, so it's EXIF tool. And then look at all this. So this is all data that is attached to that image. And so there's, there's a bunch of it. Um, so yeah, you gotta cruise through and figure out what, what all you want. So, yeah. I'm not going to do it, but you can go through and you can read a bunch of these and it's useful to know the kind of data that you can get off of an image. So let's see what the question actually asks. Try to find where the kidnappers took the image they attached to their document. What is the name of the street? Okay, so we need the actual longitude and latitude for this. So. Let's kind of look for that. That's not longitude, latitude. Here we go. Position, longitude, latitude. So we have all of that right here, which is awesome. We also have the data was created. Also could be very useful in a forensic. So we have all that. And so basically at this point, what they have you do is you just Google it, you throw it into Google Earth, Google Maps, Bing Maps, whatever, and you should be able to find it. I'm not gonna do that, um, but if you do that, 
and they walk you through how to do that down here you should find milk street so that longitude and latitude lead to milk street which i believe was in the uk so that is where the image was actually taken now it wants to know what is the model name of the camera used to take this photo so let's see here we want model name lens id canon ef that's not the model name my guess is the model name might be somewhere further up here so let's see camera model name here we go canon eos r6 so there we go we're going to put that in submit that and with that you finish the intro to digital forensics room from try hack me if you found the video helpful please give it a like subscribe that helps me out a ton and now that you've done the intro to digital forensics you have to check out the security operations room that's the next room in the introduction to defensive security module and the intro to cybersecurity pathway so make sure you check that out and you can check that out on my channel or you can just click the link on your screen